Hi, welcome to Lecture 7 in Soccer 3666. Um, today I'm looking at the work of Daniel Miller, who's an anthropologist, a very prominent anthropologist um, in um, the study of consumption in particular. Uh, and so I suppose today we're moving away from more kind of overtly philosophical and theoretical understandings that started the course and, you know, we move towards the kind of more ethnographic and participant observation with subculture theorists. Um, in this lecture, I'm looking at the work of Miller, who's an anthropologist who does deep ethnographies um, around consumption. So um, what Miller, I think, is particularly useful for is to thinking about the more mundane, everyday aspects of consumption. So Miller, in particular, um, like is, is quite far removed from the Frankfurt School idea of a cultural dupe. In fact, his model of the consuming human is essentially the opposite of that. That consumption is a key way that humans express their identity, express their relations to others, and express their emotions. For Miller, things have always played a deeply important role in what it means to be a human. In this sense, things, our everyday stuff, you know, the things we consume, um, and the popular cultural texts that we consume as well, do cultural work. Um, so you can see a kind of heavy Borgesian influence here. Miller's quite influenced by Borgia, but does critically engage with Borgia as well. For Miller, things represent social difference. They establish people's social identity and manage social status. And they've always done this in all cultures. So the things that people own and gather and collect and use always play a deep um, kind of identi identity role in the ways that different cultures are work different cultures work. Consumer cultures, in terms of the way we've been talking about it so far, argues that kind of the way we consume is a kind of cultural dupe kind of thing. Miller says no. Um, while capitalism pro provides aspects of that, people have always, you know, in, in, whether it's feudal societies or different tribes in different eons, have always used things to communicate, and to create identity, and to, as, as kind of economies of exchange. In our world, in our societies today, consumer goods form and delineate cultural meanings that create self and cultures. They give personal meaning to something we exchange, and we exchange things together for pleasure, for identity purposes, also for things, you know, for money and profit. And we also do things to kind of, in terms of gifts, in terms of our relation to others, and as um, Miller's work around um, housewives and shopping goes um, as forms of self-sacrifice. So we incorporate the aspects of ourselves into a product, it becomes part of us. These things provide us safety and comfort, identity, meaning, nostalgia. Miller here wants us to think more like um, ethnographically about what happens in the everyday situations that we live in. So one way of thinking about the way that things really matter in terms of form of exchange is through the notion of the gift. Now the gift is a central anthropological um, concept that I'm not going to go into in too much detail here in terms of defining that. Hopefully um, some people in the course are studying Soccer 1020, the intro to anthropology course. Um, but I'm just kind of thinking more generally here about when you buy someone a gift, you go through a kind of process of evaluation, of exchange, that kind of in many ways may speak to what your relationship is with that person. So firstly, you might ask yourself, how much are you gonna spend? In a way there, you're asking how much are they worth? How much are you willing to sacrifice um, to buy this person something that might make them happy? Then you've got to think about what they like. You wanna buy them a gift that's gonna make them happy. So then you have to know the person in a particular way. Um, it's often difficult to, <laughs> to buy presents for people you don't know very well. Um, What's interesting here too is that they might have very different tastes than you. So are you willing to buy something if you don't like it yourself? Because you might be worried about what this then says about you. Um, and so it's often to today people buy gifts as jokes and they buy kind of silly things for each other. And so will they find it funny? And again, what will the person think about me if I buy this for them? So this obviously has resonances with the board of taste classifiers and the classifiers the classifier. From Miller's perspective here, the gift and the way that we exchange these things is a key form of human relationships. So I've put in an extended quote in here to kind of uh, from Miller's uh, work on 
what's wrong with consumption. Um, just to kind of get an idea of the perspective here. You can see here this is kind of almost the anti uh, Frankfurt School perspective. So familiar commodities are not about waste, they're about love. The critique of consumption and, com and commodities in general is often aligned with a general taste for capitalism. Um, Bill Miller's own issue with capitalism has much more to do with persistent inequalities that prevents people from actually obtaining the commodities and consumer products that they may want and desire. And for him, this confuses the need for equality and redistribution with a growing distaste for commodities as tainted as kind of being the kind of expression of capitalism, the expression of waste, and you know, increasingly around things like sustainability and climate change in particular. So as he says, you know, this same confusion today seems to be also related to things like climate change. This rhetoric of kind of consuming less is doomed to fail because it's so hypocritical. Um, Miller knows dozens of people who constantly bemoan the terrible consequences of commodities and how they don't make anyone happy. But as he says, every one of them enjoys a kind of middle class lifestyle um, that to his informants in other lands, Miller does lots of work in places like the Caribbean, and, um, not just in Britain. Um, you know, they, they, these people that complain about, you know, commodities often seem to be living quite luxurious lifestyles. So Miller here wants to point out the hypocrisies of much kind of left middle class politics around the notions of consumption, particularly because those people tend to be using quite high consumer lifestyles. This is what Miller calls the poverty of morality. He argues the critique of consumption is bound up with the ideological and moral critiques of, of capitalism. Now these ideological and moral critiques are, are valid in many ways, but they kind of then shift that kind of critique towards consumption and start to ignore the kind of inequalities that affect many people. Not just in the West, Miller is particularly talking about here between the kind of developed and develop, developing world, what we now kind of better refer to as the, the North and the South. So as he says, at one level, most consumption is about basic household provisioning, as in food and clothing. More deeply, it is also about the intensity of relationships with the people you care most about or live with, about status and local symbolic systems. So this is what, when, um, when Miller talks of what he calls materiality, he's not just talking about the possessions, the collections, the attachments or the artefacts themselves. This is too easily kind of associated with materialism, which is kind of a key pejorative in the ways that people critique consumer culture. When Miller refers to materiality, he's referring to a much more anthropological perspective. He's considering the meanings, the emotions, the effects, the relationships, rituals, comforts, security, order, communication that our things provide, and particularly the pleasures they provide us as well. So importantly here, um, Miller argues that what is what it means to be human is always and always will contain elements of this materiality. And this is regardless of what the dominant ide ideology is, it's regardless of the ways that society are organised according to Miller's point of view. This is not to say there be, won't be aspects of manipulation and you know, cultural dupes, but things, you know, again, in that Michel de Sartor kind of ways of making do and in the subcultural ways of maybe providing resistance and in Miller's ways of just providing meaning to everyday life, actually mean a lot more than those kind of ideological perspectives. And I'll talk about aspects about that in the second part of today's lecture.